Good afternoon, everyone. This is Shannon Scott, live here in Bonaventure Cemetery, and welcome to another episode of Bonaventure TV. Uh, but thanks for joining us, and also, people have asked through the years, and, and really I'm shooting this video because uh, one of the uh, subscribers asked, where was the Bird Girl statue from Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? And of course, for those unfamiliar, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil was the New York Times bestseller of all time. It was number one for two years straight, top ten for four. It shattered all the records and, of course, gave me a job, you could say, in permanence. Uh, almost a million people a year now come to Bonaventure Cemetery because of the book making uh, the name Bonaventure a household word. And also, the book uh, was sold to the world, you could really say, because of that iconic statue of the bird girl with her scales of good and evil. And, of course, there's a lot more depth to what the garden idea is in terms of the title idea, but we're not really here to address that today. Uh, I'll just put it this way. In a cemetery, we could say it's like the place where the fates of souls are decided and um, the shamans of the, uh, the Gullah Geechee culture, they really consider these kind of courtrooms. And one known to uh, Jim Williams, who is sort of the uh, main character, although real Savannah of the book, was Lady Minerva, the root doctor, who came out here the half an hour before midnight to do love spells and money spells. And of course, the other half of midnight is when you do death curses and maybe pell-mell spell work. Okay, but <clears throat> nonetheless, the statue of the bird girl, uh, or as she was known when she was made in 1936, Little Wendy is what she was called by the sculptor Sylvia Shaw Judson. And it was an operating bird fountain, I believe in Boston, in a courtyard uh, of someone who really loved it. And then when that person died, and I believe were buried here in Bonaventure, the statue then was, uh, or sorry, the bird fountain was decommissioned, I suppose, and then brought here to the plot overlooking the bluff of the family. And it stood here... Uh, for some decades with this wonderful view and really what happened is that you know it was like a neat statue and probably some people took photos of it now and again and who knows maybe they were even thinking just as scales when they photographed uh, the bird girl pre-publishing of the book in 1993 but in 1992 the local low country photographer of fame Jack Lee was given the title by Random House Midnight in the Garden of Evil. I don't think he had one iota what the uh, or clue what the book was about. He just had the title, and I don't even he I don't even know if he knew that Bonaventure was the garden concept in the title idea. I don't know that, but you know he loved to photograph here. His family's buried here. He's now buried here as of um, oh gosh, 2005, I believe. And uh, so he came out here pre-dawn morning, as he told his wife later, who related this to me. Uh, he told her that he was going to Bonaventure to court the fog. And in doing so, he sees the statue of the bird girl. And he's like, ah, that may be it. And so he shoots the photograph. And although daylight is really what you see in the end image, like reflecting off of the bronze or the metal of the statue, he in the, inside of the, the dark room, uh, Jack Lee actually worked... Um, the the idea or the feeling of moonlight so it has that whole midnight vibe but yeah i mean that that book was sold to the world by that iconic image jack lee who was already a famous photographer in a regional sense i suppose uh he now is an internationally acclaimed photographer he could show that image in his other works really globally i suppose and he made quite a nice living and as some of you know uh when um universal pictures i believe made the Clint Eastwood film. Apparently they used the Bird Girl statue without uh, Jack Lee's um, approval. And Jack Lee ended up suing um, Universal, I believe. And I think he walked away with a, a seven figure sum. So he did really nicely for himself with the Bird Girl many times over. And we really miss him. He died of colon cancer and um, left two uh, young daughters. Um, but you know, really the Bird Girl, has been looking out for them, I would suppose, financially, and maybe are, are their an, is their angel or something like that. But anyway, through the years, um, 
there were a lot of people coming to Bonaventure now to look at the bird girl, pose with the bird girl, and it created some controversy. And um, I think the bird girl was really taken out of Bonaventure for political reasons um, more than it was a knee-jerk reaction, or sorry, it was a knee-jerk reaction versus maybe something more practical that they could have done. Uh, but it's just the way it all panned out. And so the bird girl was taken out of Bonaventure in 1996. And uh, I think some of the old guard thought, well, you know, well, maybe that'll take away the fanfare. Well, obviously it's had the opposite reaction. But even now on my tours, I get people driving up to me here on these roads like, hey, where's that statue? And I have to tell them that. It's not been here for over 20 years. It's actually in the mezzanine. And I think now a room devoted to her at the Jepson Center of Telfair Square and so you got to go down there. She's now gone all city on us. Uh, she went from country girl, I guess, or cemetery girl to uh, city girl. <laughs> and doing quite well for herself. I mean, I think she's getting all the party invites even now. Um, but anyway, the bird girl was standing here on the bluff for all those years. And apparently there's a gentleman's agreement between the family and uh, the powers, I guess, that you know they won't really publish where the bird girl was and honestly if you're just on TripAdvisor or the internet for three minutes you can find out exactly where it was so you know there's you know the internet um i think kind of ruined that or what, however you want to look at it i don't think it's a big thing but uh i will ask you that when i do show you where the bird girl stood that you pay respect to the plot and don't tromp around in the plot so i'm not going to show you the family name on the footstone but I'm gonna show you where the statue was. And so off here to our right, where you see a little bench at the back of the plot, that is where the bird girl statue stood. And Jack Lee photographed straight down here from the front. And things have changed very little actually since he published uh, the photograph. But now the iron bench of the Victorian age there replaces where the bird girl stood. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to show people that just for reference to where it used to be in reality along with the environment because, you know, I think it's fair that uh, people have that understanding because, you know, it's like, where was the bird girl? Was she in the middle of the cemetery, the front of the cemetery? No, she was actually here on the bluff. And incidentally, kind of a funny epilogue to that is that a lot of people don't know that there were two bird girl statues made for Bonaventure. After the first one was yanked, um, the president of the Historical Society, who was a really cool guy that died too young, uh, he thought tourism was like the perfect thing for Bonaventure. And, you know, I mean, there's there are pros and cons, but mostly it's pro. And so he wanted to do something that was a nod to the fans of the book, would maybe become a bit of a draw too, because he knew that it was obviously a draw. So he contacted the uh, sculptor Sylvia Shaw Judson I want to say in 1996, she was still living, and um, he asked her, would she make a second copy of the bird girl? Well, she said, well, I'll make one, but it's got to be like three inches shorter. So she had a foundry make it. It was delivered here to the front entrance of Bonaventure, and then about two or three weeks into its life, someone came around and protested that uh, she didn't represent the place, she wasn't really a part of the place anymore. And I think somebody really squashed it who had more power, I guess. And so even the second bird girl was uh, put away. In fact, the second bird girl, uh, for gosh, easily 20 years, was in the closet of the caretaker house here at Bonaventure. And I always kind of joke, yeah, she was in the closet. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but anyway, uh, the second one has been removed to some unknown location. But, uh, but yeah, there were two bird girls of controversy. But the first was, of course, Little Wendy, a.k.a. the Bird Girl, uh, made 1936, and this was the part of Bonaventure that she was in, uh, which is so, so lovely, because we all love coming down here and enjoying the view. But gang, um, thanks for watching this. Hope you found this informational. Um, and again, please show the family plot respect if you're out here. Just observe it from the outside, which is generally the rule of thumb anyway. But uh, we look forward to storing you soon. Thanks again for that question about the bird girl from one of our subscribers. It was my honor to address it. And um, yeah, please keep those questions coming. Like and share and subscribe. And then uh, who knows, come out to Bonaventure and see us in person. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful spring. And for now, goodbye from Bonaventure.